Yes, um, guys, this is um, a great time. I come in for a session of financial reporting and analysis. Uh, my name, you know, that it's CPA Dunachoy. So we always do live sessions uh, other than in the YouTube platform. Remember that uh, we have been doing classes in the Zoom platform. That is the evening classes from 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. So that is uh, the classes I've been doing from time to time. For the YouTube ones, they, be, they always post occasionally, not from time to time. So what do I mean is that uh, you are welcomed to live classes, the Zoom classes. So we are now entering the crucial part of the syllabus that is uh, in financial reporting and advanced financial reporting, which I do most. Even if I have, I have partners, I have partnered with other guys who does other units. You can join the unit you could like to do. So for today, uh, I have come in to look at uh, a question of published financial statement that is from financial reporting and analysis. To be more specific, it's from uh, April 2023 sitting. So that is uh, just the previous sitting which was done. So I would like to look at that question, the April 2023 question three. So I will be able to attach the link down here. So you will be able to check the link to that past paper so that you will be able to check as I continue doing it. So I will give you one minute uh, before I start that uh, as a trustworthy supporter of this channel, subscribe to my channel. So just press the subscription button in five seconds. That is five, four, three, two, one. So I think you have subscribed and opened the notification bell so that once I upload any video, you will be notified. So let's go to April 2023, question three. April 2023, question three. That is a question of published financial statements. A question of published financial statements published financial statements whereby the examiner asked the students to prepare statement of profit or loss and the statement of financial position so also i have said that uh, there's a link down here which you can open so that you have the question and that one will be easier for you to understand as i continue uh, interpreting it so in my case i will be able to read since i know that you have it now so they were saying that the following trial balance was prepared by Sarama Remitted as at the 1st December 2022. So you can see from your question is that you have been given a trial balance uh, starting from ordinary share capital up to suspense account. Then in the additional information, you have been told that the inventory as at the 1st December 2022 was valued at shilling 16 million. However, there were some goods which were considered obsolete and with, with a net realizable value of 400,000 and a cost of 450,000 with a net replacement value of 350. So, what I will be doing as I read an additional information, I will be able to interpret it. I will be able to interpret it. Like now, in the additional information number one, because obviously in published financial statements, uh, before even I talk about additional information number one, in the published financial statements, you can be asked to prepare the statement of profit or loss, statement of financial position and statement of changes in equity beside cash flow statement. So if they will test a cash flow statement, let's say in the coming sitting, you will not be told to prepare the published statement of profit or loss, statement of changes in equity and the statement of financial position. Uh, let's go back to the additional information number one, where they were talking about inventory. Inventory. On this scenario, how am I supposed to account for my inventory? So remember that the inventory is accounted using international accounting standards too. So this one will be my working number one. So this adjustment which is supposed to be done, because they said the inventory as at the first December 2022 was valued at 16 million. So that is the end of the year. However, there were some event, there were some goods which were considered obsolete, of no value, that is, with a net realizable value of 450. And the cost of those goods was 450. 
So the net the net realizable value of the obsolete good is 400 cost is 450 so on that case uh, when i will be doing my adjustments the loss on stock because some goods now will be considered uh, obsolete there so loss on stock on this scenario remember that we have a net realizable value we have a net realizable value of 400 then the cost the cost is 450. So what we, we realized from the goods which were considered obsolete is 400. But the cost of those goods were at 450. Meaning that we made a loss of 50. We made a loss of 50. So, um, so that my adjusted stock will be adjusted. My adjusted closing stock. My adjusted closing stock will be now remember that the inventory was stated at 16 million. So I will be able to minus the loss which we have created from what was considered obsolete from the value of the goods which were stated at 16. So we made a loss of 50 based on the obsolete goods which were at a cost of 450 or which they, they realized 400. So we made a loss of 450. So 16,000 minus 50, that is 15,950. 15,950. For the other figure given there, the net addressable value, that is irrelevant. That is irrelevant. The number two, the 6% debentures were, were issued on 1st July 2022. Interest on debenture is payable semi annually, is payable after six months. So the 6% debenture were issued. On 1st July 2022. So here, when I will be determining my, my interest, which is a, uh, which will be classified under finance cost. Eh? Remember that uh, under published expenses are classified under cost of sales and uh, administrative expenses under distribution cost and finance cost. So you are told that the six percent debenture were issued on 1st July 2022. Interest on debenture is paid same annually. So the interest on debenture is payable same annually. Interest on debenture. So if you go to your trial balance, you will be able to see the value of the debenture. The value of the debenture. Go to your trial balance using the question you have. So you can see there is a 6% debenture. The third item in your trial balance. The third item in your trial balance. So that is uh, the debenture. The interest is paid at 6% times 10,000, same annually 6 months, 6 over 12. So what are you getting up to that point? So picking my calculator, uh, 0 0.06 times uh, 10,000 times 6 over 12. So that is 300. That is 300. So for me to finish everything concerning uh, finance cost, that is uh, all interests, I can again pick uh, another item which uh, has an interest, which is uh, an 8% redeemable prevalent shares. 8% prevalent shares. So, so for eight percent redeemable prevalent shares, so I will say you have eight percent. Remember, this is a redeemable, not irredeemable. Eh? This is redeemable, eight percent redeemable prevalent shares. So we have that. So eight percent of twelve thousand. 8% of 12,000, 0 0.08 times 12,000. So that is 960. That is 960. So remember that this is a, what I'm getting from here, the 8% eh, redeemable 
preference shares it's all about we, what we call uh, what we have calculated here is all about the preference dividends which we need to add back to the 300 so 960 plus 960 plus 300 That is twelve sixty. That is twelve one twelve sixty. That is twelve sixteen. Mm -hmm. uh, so the next addition information is addition information number three. Whereby they are saying that the purpose of the company in relation, in relation to depreciation of its assets is as follows. Eh? So you are told resold building 4% on straight line basis, plant and equipment 20% on straight line basis, furniture and fittings 4% on reducing. So we can do depreciations here. So our depreciations. So our depreciations starting from a uh, resold building. Starting from resold building. So resold building is at 4%. So 4% on straight line basis on the cost of the building given in the trial balance. We have 56 to what? 250. Then the next one is depreciation on plant and equipment. Plant and equipment. So again on a straight line basis on a straight train basis but remember that uh, the plant and equipment has a residual value of 5 million which we have to deduct so the plant and equipment is stated at uh, 55000 eh? so i would come here and say 20% times so that is uh, 55000 minus the residual value minus the disposal i think there was a disposal which occurred eh, somewhere if I'm not wrong, that is according to note six. The suspense account represents two components proceeds from sale of plant, 16 million, whose cost was 20 million. Eh? There was proceeds from sale of a plant. There was a plant which was disposed. Its cost was at what? 20 million. So we have to deduct that value of that plant. Then another depreciation is on furniture and fittings. Furniture and the fittings. So for the furniture and fittings, it's at 4% on reducing. So reducing, remember that uh, I have to deduct the accumulated depreciation from the cost of the furniture and fittings. So the cost of the furniture and fittings is at uh, 35000 so 35,000 minus the accumulated depreciation, which is 9,600. The accumulated depreciation, which is 9,600. So we'll be able to determine the values for the depreciations. So 0 0.04 times 56 to 50. So this is 2250. So, so this is uh, 50,000 so 0 0.2 times 30,000 so this is 6,000 the last one 35,000 minus 9,600 times 0 0.04 so this is 1016 that is 1016 so those are the depreciations that is note 3 so they say that depreciation is classified as cost of sales expense, except for depreciation on furniture and fittings, which is classified as an admin. So remember that uh, once you are doing the classification of expenses under published, expenses will not be shown in the income statement individually, but they will be classified based on various functional heads. So expenses can be classified under cost of sales, administrative, cost selling and distribution and finance cost so expenses appears in those four functional heads 
So some expenses goes to the cost of sales, some goes to administrative cost, some goes to selling and distribution, and others go to fin finance cost. That is why you have been told uh, depreciation is classified as cost of sales expense, except for depreciation on furniture and fittings, which is classified as an admin expense. We'll do that. Eh? I will do that. Number four, the taxable timing difference was 24 million, while the deductible timing difference was 10.5. So this one will assist us when I will be determining my deferred tax and at the end to determine the income tax, which is supposed to be payable in the current year under consideration. So let's compute for tax. So starting with that deferred tax. So starting with the deferred tax. Remember this is working three. So working four. There they are talking about deferred tax. So we know that deferred tax is all about temporary difference times tax rate. It's all about temporary difference times tax rate. Temporary differences times tax rate. Temporary differences times ta tax rate. So we have both taxable and deductible. Because those are the two types of temporary differences. In this question, we have both taxable and deductible. So what we have to do, we have to net. Then we multiply the final answer with the tax rate. So we have 24. So we have taxable, 24,000. And the deductible is 10,500. So we net, then multiply with tax rate. We multiply with the tax rate. So 24,000 minus 10,500 times 0 0.3. That is 4050. So 4050 is the deferred tax. As at which period? As at the year end. Is there another deferred tax provided in the trial balance? So that I conclude which type of deferred tax I've determined there. Yes, we have a, another deferred tax of 5,200 from the trial balance, the second last item, which is as at the end of the year. So the one in the trial balance is the one as at the end of the year. So the one we have determined is the one from the start of the year. Because they said the taxable timing difference was 24 million, and while the deductible timing difference was 10.5 million during the year. So this one is the, the one we have determined is the one as at the start of the year. So that year now, uh, remember that my income tax will be current tax plus or minus increase or decrease in deferred tax. Increase or decrease in deferred tax plus tax under provision minus tax over provision so the current tax is the tax payable in the current year under consideration So which is the current tax payable in the current year under consideration? So looking at the question, this additional information number five, the corporation tax of 21.4 million is provided for the year. So that is the current tax, 21,400. So then now I need to conclude about the increase or decrease in deferred tax. So remember that, this deferred tax we have determined here is the deferred tax as at the start of the year. And our financial year was starting when? January. So 1st January 2022. So we have 4050. By the end, deferred tax as at 31st December 2022. Is the one which was provided in the trial balance, the second last item in the trial balance, the one which is 5,200. I think you are seeing that from your question. So, meaning that there was an increase 
So an increase of, so 5200 minus 4050. That is an increase or a decrease. So let's again check. Mm -hmm. Our financial year is ending when? That is what I need to clarify. So our financial year ends on 31st December. Our financial year ends on 31st December 2022. So meaning that, uh, yes, so it's uh, just a short mistake we have, we have made. Eh? So the one we have determined here, this one is the one as of 31st December. It was as a, by the end of the period. Then from the start of the year, the one we have in the trial balance, this is the one from the start of the year. And so that, that is why I would be able to say that there is a decrease, not an increase, sorry. So this one, the one we have determined here, this one, is the one as at the end of the year. The one we have in the trial balance, this one, is the one as at the start of the year. So that here we have a decrease from 52 to uh, 40, 50. That is 11, 50. So decrease we minus, so minus 11, 50. We don't have tax under provision or over provision. So 21,400. 21,400 minus answer. So this is 20 to 50. So that will, will be my tax. The tax payable. The income tax which is supposed to be paid during the period. That is the relevant tax. Then the next addition information is addition information number six. We do seven, then we are done. We do the statements as required by the examiner. So here we are told that there is a suspense account which represents two components. Proceeds from sale of plants of 16 million. The cost was 20 million. Accumulated precision was 2.5 million. Then there is a 10 million being a bonus issue of shares. So let's, uh, let's do the relevant working for that so that we know where we'll be able to do the relevant posting when I will be doing the statements, when I will be doing my relevant postings. So, you know that there's a disposal which has happened there. The suspense account was showing that, that the proceeds on sale of a plant. So when there's a proceed, we do a disposal so that we know if there's a Gain or loss. So the cost, the cost of the plant was 20,000. Then we have proceeds, sell proceeds of 16. 16,000. Accumulated depreciation is 25. So that, because that is what we have been told. Eh? So that we know that uh, we have a, a loss or again we have a loss on disposal here the balancing figure so a loss is an expense so we have a loss of 1500 so this is 20000 this is 20000 so we have a loss of 1500 then the bonus will be able to account for it later, which has been given there. Then the tax rate, we used it when I was determining my deferred tax. I said temporary difference times tax rate. So the next thing I will do is the statement of expense allocation so that I classify my expenses as required. Statement of expense allocation. Statement of expense allocation. So expenses are supposed to be classified under cost of sales, under administrative expenses, and finally we have distribution. 
So for a finance cost already, you remember working too. We did that. Eh? I don't have to show that again. So we start with the, the balances as per trial balance. As per trial balance. Cost of sales. If you don't have cost of sales, you determine. Which is opening stock. According to the question, our inventory as at the start of the year is given. 12,400. So 12,400 plus purchases. I can see this is a purchase of 147,200. Minus closing stock, which we determined in working number one, which was 15,950. So I could be able to determine my cost of sales. 12,400, which is opening inventory, plus purchases of 14, 7, 147,200. Minus closing inventory of 15,950. As per working number one, we get 143, 650, 143. Then for admin, as per the trial balance, is 34, 440. Then a distribution, that is 22,300. And we go to the additional information. We check any expenses to be classified under this. So additional information number three. There are depreciations, so we check those depreciations. So depreciations on what? So remember they said depreciations are classified under cost of sales, except for the depreciation on furniture and fittings, eh? which will go to admin, administrative expenses, that is. So resold building, cost of sales. We did this, we determined, I remember 22.50. This one here, plant and equipment, plant and equipment is 6,000, eh? and furniture and fittings is the one now goes to admin, furniture and fittings, eh? 10, 16. Another expense, like now, another expense is according to additional information number what? Number six. Remember, we did a disposal account, eh? this one. We determined our loss. Loss on disposal of what? Plant. This was a plant, which was disposed. So, loss on disposal of plant. So, the loss on disposal of plant. So that one, remember the plant, the depreciation for plant we have classified under cost of sales. So meaning that even the loss will be classified under cost of sales. So the 1500. So nothing else. So those are the expenses which were supposed to be classified under this functional hands. So this is 22,300. 22, 300. Then 34, 440, plus 10, 16. This is 35, 456. 35, 456. Then the first one, 143, 650, plus 2250, plus 6000, plus 1500. So this is 153,400. So once we have done that, we will be able to do the presentation of the statements now which are required by the examiner. Now an easier job which is remaining. The presentation of the statements required by the examiner. And that is what is marked. So what we have been doing is just workings. So the next work is what is marked. So now we will be saying Sarama Limited. So we are doing statement of profit or loss. Statement of profit or loss. That is for the year. Our financial. So our financial ended on 31st December 2022. 
So uh, we start from, uh, so we say shillings in thousands. So we start from the revenue. So the revenue is from the trial balance, which is given. So from the trial balance, we have 283, 460. So we raise now the cost of sales. We raise the cost of sales. Cost of sales is 153, 400. That is from the working here. So we determine the gross profit. So what you have realized is that I have not gone ahead to say cost of sales is equal to opening stock plus purchases minus closing stock. That one is done as an outside working. You would never show that in the statement. What I need to see in your statement is the cost of sales only. Without other stories. Other stories now, those are your workings. So we add incomes. So from the question, I can see this investment income from the trial balance of 1,500. Then less expenses. You deduct expenses like now we have administrative. So these two now, administrative expenses. So that is 35, 456. So this one you deduct. Selling and distribution. So the distribution cost. So it's 22,300. And there was finance cost, additional information number two, working two, sorry. Finance cost, this is our working two we did. We got 1260, you remember that? Based on the debenture and redeemable prevalent shares. So up to this point, we have profit before tax. Then now, uh, income tax, again, we did our working, where we did deferred and that is a current tax. We got 20 to 50. So here we have profit after tax, profit after tax, profit after tax. The profit after tax. So I can be able to use my calculator to determine that. Profit after tax. So 283,460 plus, not plus, minus 153,400. So this is 130,060 plus 1500 minus 35,456 minus 22,300 minus 1260. So this is 72,544 minus 2250. So this is 52,294. So I, we don't have other comprehensive incomes. So the next uh, requirement by the examiner in this April 2023, but before I go to the next one, uh, remember that this first part we have done, it was in need of our main question. The examiner was in need of our many, not question, how many marks? So it was awarded how many marks? So it was awarded, it was awarded eight marks. But the examiner was in need of any four correct, any four. Add two so that you get eight. So meaning that uh, out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, they were in need of only four, correct? So you get your you get your eight marks. So the next requirement was statement of changes in equity. The statement of changes in equity. So remember that the statement of changes in equity, we check the movement in terms of equity components, which we have. 
So again, it's a question of Sarama Limited. So statement of changes in equity. Statement of changes in equity. So that is for the year. Our financial was ending when? 31st December 2022. So checking in the trial balance, uh, you can check in your trial balance, which are some of the equity components you have. You have uh, ordinary share capital, you have revaluation, reserve, and you have retained earnings. Those are the three. I will be able to read them here. Ordinary share capital. We have revaluation reserve. We have retained earnings. The obvious we have the total of those items which we have, the equity components. Now we need to check the changes in these equity items. So we start with the balance as per trial balance. So the balances as per the trial balance, which is 20,000 as per my equation. We have revaluation reserve of 3,400 and retained earnings of uh, 14,160. So we sum 20,000 plus 3,400 plus 14,160. So this is 37,560. 37,560. Now I will be able to check items which would affect uh, right now this uh, ordinary share capital, evaluation reserve, and retained earnings based on our question. So, like now, in the additional information, there was that suspense account which was having a bonus. There's a bonus there of 10 million. Being, an, being a bonus issue of shares. Huh? Remember, this, this, one, this, this statement is in terms of thousand. So here there's a bonus issue. So when we, we issue a bonus, uh, a bonus is issue of shares for free at no consideration. So there's no return we'll be getting, meaning that there's an increase of capital because we, we issued shares. Eh? Even if there's no equivalent return we are getting, it's a, an issue of shares we did to the existing shareholders at no consideration. So our capital must increase. Then. Uh, Our profit for the year was profit for the year. We do increase our retained earnings. So our profit for the year is this one. The one from the income statement, 52, 294. 52, 294. Out of the total profit, we need to check if they paid dividends. Dividends paid. If there's any dividends which are paid so that it reduces our retained earnings under the total. So from the from the question, there's an interim dividend paid, the ordinary ones of two thousand. That is what we deduct there. So I'm done with this statement. So here I have thirty thousand. I have thirty four hundred. So fourteen one sixty. Plus 52, 294, minus 2000. So this is uh, 64, 454. Plus 3400, plus 30,000. So the total is 97, 854. But which is not important. I only need these. These ones are the ones which would appear in the equity part. Eh? of the statement of financial position. But now remember that before we do the statement of financial position, I have to do the 
one working for the property plant and equipment. There is one working I have to do, whereby I have to classify my long term tangible assets. The tangible asset must be classified under PPE. So here I have to classify my assets under property plans and equipment. So which assets do I have? The fixed assets that was free old. That was uh, that is resold. Building. The resold building. Remember that uh, the resold building. Uh, it was stated at uh, 56 to 50. 50. So you have to deduct. There is an accumulated. There, there, there is a accumulated depreciation of 18,000. And there was a depreciation for the year. The depreciation for the year. The, peri the depreciation for the period. Eh? The one we got of 2250. So this is accumulated depreciation, and this is the depreciation for the year. And the next item we talk about is plant and equipment. Plant and equipment, not equity, equipment. So for the plant and equipment, this is the one which was a bit challenging. So remember that it was uh, stated at what? 55,000. Eh? It was stated at 55,000. So here, uh, under, under under this, there was a disposal which was done. Eh? So I need to determine the NBV of the asset disposed but before that i need to minus first accumulated depreciation of 12800 so there's a nbv of 12 that is a this accumulated depreciation remember this is costs accumulated depreciation then now there was a, this aspect of an asset which was disposed that is according to additional information number 6 so i need to determine the net book value of that which is all about 20,000 minus 2,500. So NBV on disposal. NBV on disposal. So this one will give me 17,500. So in short, I minus here 17,500. So 17,500 is just what, I've, what I've done is, is taking 20,000, the cost of the asset which was disposed minus the accumulated depreciation of 2,500. The accumulated depreciation of 2500. That is what I have done. Then, uh, what else do I have to deduct here? It's all about the depreciation for the year. The depreciation for the year. The one we determined when we were doing depreciation, which was 6000. It was 6000. Then uh, after that, we talk about another asset, which is uh, furniture and fittings. For furniture and fittings. So for the furniture and fittings, so we have thirty five thousand. We minus accumulated depreciation from the trial balance. So the accumulated depreciation. Is 9600. Then the depreciation for there, you remember, was 1016. You remember that. You remember that. So, using my calculator here, I can be able to determine the net book values eh, of these assets. Then we get a total one figure to be called property, plant, and equipment for these assets. So, this is 36,000. The second one is so fifty five thousand minus twelve eight hundred minus seventeen five hundred minus six thousand. So this is eighteen seven hundred. 
And the last one is 35,000 minus 9600 minus 1016. So this is 24, 3 to 4. So let's get the total 36,000 plus 18,700 plus 24,384. So I'm getting 79,084. 79,084. So from there now it can be easier for us to present the statement of financial position. Eh? So let's do that. So the presentation now, the presentation of the statement of financial position. Again, what I could like to request is that this is how we do our live classes, the Zoom classes, the live Zoom classes. So join, join, we do a lot of work. Like now, financial reporting is on Wednesday and Thursdays, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. There we discuss more. I introduce a topic. We do the general introduction like a normal session. It's a normal session, like a normal class. The one most of you believe, believe on. Now, that one is past time. From, for online, you will be reading from where you are. So from your comfort. So you don't have to commute. So make, a, make, make time and join. My number is 0728-760-546. So, Sarama Limited. Statement of financial position. Asset. Our financial ends on 31st December 2022. So shillings in thousands. So we start from non-current assets. So for the non-current assets, we start from PP, property, plant, and equipment. The working which is, has been done here. So we have the aspect of 79,084. After that, there is a, from the trial balance, I can see there is investments. So the investments, The investments, which is 34,500, it's just after furniture fittings and uh, furniture fittings. After furniture and fittings, you can see investments there. So, after non-current assets, we have current assets. So, for the current assets, we have a closing inventory. We did our working. It was working one. So, the 5950. After that, I can see from my question here, there is receivables. So the receivable is 35,700. Up to that point, we have total assets. Total assets. Then we go to the second part of the enemy. That is equity and liabilities of the statement. So remember that for the equity, we copy from the, from the statement of changes in equity. There were three. Ordinary share capital. Ordinary share capital. There was revaluation reserve. There was a revaluation reserve. After the revaluation reserve, the next thing is the last one. After the revaluation reserve, There's retained earnings. So this one was 30,000. You can check from the second part of the equation. 
we did the statement of changes in equity. This one was 3400 and this one was 64. The totals, eh? 64, 454. Then uh, was there an uncurrent liabilities? Yes. The redeemables. But there was a redeemable prevalent share. So redeemable prevalent share is a liability. A redeemable is the one which is equity. So now here we have eight percent redeemable prevalent shares. Eh? There was that, which is 12,000. There was 6% debenture. A 6% debenture of 10,000 from the trial balance. And there is a deferred tax. As at the end of the year, the one which we said 30% of the temporary difference. We were having taxable temporary difference of 24,000 and a deductible temporary difference of 10,500. So we did a net of the taxable and the deductible temporary difference then multiplied with 30%. Because deferred tax is te uh, temporary difference times tax rate. So this one gave us 4050. So deferred tax as at the end of the year was 4050. Then current liabilities, as we finish. So current liabilities, we have the payables. We have the payables, which is 17 from the trial balance, 17, 750. We have bank overdraft from the trial balance, which is, uh, which is other than, we have 1680. Other than the payables on that, we have others like current tax, the one which is supposed to be paid in the current year. We have a current tax. So we have a current tax, which is additional information. Additional information number five. The corporation tax of 21,400 is to be provided for the year. That is a provision for the year. It has not yet been paid. And other than that, there is a dividends. Accrued prevalence dividends. The accrued prevalence dividends. Remember that if you look at uh, the value of the prevalence dividends, which was supposed to be paid, is at eight percent. Eight percent of a uh, eight percent of twelve thousand. Is what? Eight percent of that zero point zero eight times twelve thousand. We have nine sixty. So the one which is paid, dividends paid, the prevalence dividends paid, the prevalence dividends paid. From the trial balance, we have ordinary and prevalence. So they paid for eighty. So meaning that the balance of four eighty is an accrual. This is an accrual. Accrual. But this one, the total amount was was recorded as an expense. So the balance has been paid. For it has been paid. Then the balance is accrued. So the for it. The for it is an accrual. So let's check if the question is balancing. Let's check if the question is balancing. So for the asset, 79.084 plus 34.500 plus 15.950 plus 35.700. So here I'm getting 165 to 34. So 165 to 34. What about equities and liabilities? 30,000 plus 3400 plus 64,454. The total equity is 97. 
854. Then we continue plus 12,000. Plus 10,000. Plus 4050. Plus 17,770. Plus 1680. Plus 21,400. Plus 480. So it's the same, 165 to 34. So total equities and liabilities. Total equity and liabilities. So our question balances at those figures, at those values. So even here, they were in need of any because the, 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 the marks awarded, marks awarded for this is 8. Eh? Any 4 again, eh? any 4 at 2. So you get your 8. So meaning out of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Out of 14, can you miss 4? Correct. Out of 14, there's even others which are direct, like payables, bank overdraft. Uh, eight percent demo prevalent share six many are uh, for statement of financial position s or f b the eight marks were direct eight marks were free students eh? this is the perfect work we do here you can attest that eh? that uh, i know outside here i've been coming across many students saying this and this i know this platform has helped you in one way or another and it can help another student. So make sure that uh, first you share this question. Eh? Share the link. Share the link to other platforms. Eh? Then join Zoom classes. Join Zoom classes. So the live classes. Contact my number. Contact this number. So plus 254 728 760. 546 that is my contact eh? so once you call that number i will be able to give me a direction on how we do the live classes we do more work in the classes where we interact on a daily basis eh? not on a daily basis but uh, on twice a week for online classes like financial reporting is done on wednesday and thursday 8 p.m to 10 p.m for Advanced financial reporting is done on Monday and Tuesday, 8 p.m. to 10 p.m. Welcome and thank you for your time. And remember to do the subscription. Like now, there's around 50% of the guys who watch this channel while not subscribed. Why can't you subscribe? Thank you and welcome in the online classes as we do more.